वेलकम ऑल इन टूडेज क्लास विल ट्राई टू सी हाउ टू परफॉर्म ए थर्मल एनालिसिस ऑफ ए हीट सिंग सो दिस इज द गिवेन डेटा द मेटीरियल विच गिवेन इज एल्यूमिनियम एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट इज हीट सिंक एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ के द थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी इज वन सेवेंटी वॉट पर मीटर केलविन एंड देर इज अ डेंसिटी वैल्यू टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड ई वैल्यू सेवेंटी गीगा पास्कल एंड देर इज ए आल्फा थर्मल एक्सपेंशन वैल्यूज आर गिवेन एंड इफ यू अब्जर्व देर इज ए फैन फोर्स एयर ऑल ओवर द सर्फेस ऑफ हीट सिंग एक्सेप्ट फॉर द बेस द बाउंड्री कंडीशन विच आर गिवेन इज एट द टेम्परेचर ट्वेंटी एट डिग्रीज द हीट ट्रांसफर कोविशेंट इज गिवेन एज थर्टी वाटर पर वाट पर मीटर स्क्वेयर सेंटीग्रेड द कॉन्स्टेंट हीट फ्लैक्स इज गिवेन एज thousand watt per meter square so before getting into our ansys workbench let me show you how your heat sink will be and the dimensions of the heat sink so let me show them now these are this is what heat sink is which we usually see in your maybe electronical gadgets or in your cpu the dimensions which is given as the total distance is 22 and the height from this point if it is a 0 0 to 3 is the initial height and the horizontal again it is 3 is given now the height of the fin is given as 8 now each fin distance is 1 mm which is given here each fin with this 1 mm the distance between e two fins the distance between these two fins is given as 2 mm now the this with this 1 and this with this 3 and the height of each fin is 8 now you may construct this diagram even in your ansys workbench straight away using your sketching and extrude option or the next option you can do is you can go for ketia maybe any other modeling software where you can create this diagram and you can save that file either in form of a igs or a step stp format and you can import them while you are going for your geometry now in this video what i am going to do is i have drawn this diagram by using a ketia software maybe you can draw straight away using your design modular or you can import from your any modeling software it's your wish okay so let us straight away go to our ansys so to perform the steady state thermal analysis i am selecting the steady state thermal i am just drag and drop steady state thermal now click on the engineering data you can double click straight away and click on add a new material so we want to have a material called aluminium so i'm just typing aluminium here next once you click on the aluminium then double click here so once we got the aluminium now we need to give the properties right so double click on isotropic thermal conductivity now let me drag this one or yes now enter the thermal conductivity value on the toolbar which is given as 170 now our units if you remember the problem our units are in watt meter kelvin so i am selecting the same water meter kelvin so once we are done with our isothermal conductivity click on return to the project click on return to the project now double click on the geometry or what you can do is you can right click here because here instead of directly drawing from the 
design modular i'm going to import the geometry so what i'm going to do is is i'm going to import the geometry so import geometry click on the browse so i have saved my drawing on the desktop so this is my object so i see i have saved in form of igs so click on heat sink and click on open now we, have, we can see the green mark here now what you can do is right right click on the model and click on edit now this is the heat sink which i have drawn in my modeling software and just imported into here now the next thing once you imported your geometry next thing corresponding to your geometry there is a plus symbol click here and click on heat sink and go for material assignment in here you can see the material which is existed is structural steel so click on the structural or here maybe select the aluminium now the material we have assigned for our object is aluminium now next thing once we assign the material go for mesh generate mesh so i'm just taking the automatic mesh maybe you can go for so whatever the mesh which is generated if you are not satisfied maybe you can go for changing the mesh here maybe you can go for smoothening or element size reduction these things can be carried out so for now i am comfortable with the whatever the mesh which is generated here the meshing is completed what you need to do is click on the steady state thermal for applying the boundary conditions so go for insert and go for heat flux so this is my heat flux so i need to apply the heat flux at the bottom of my sink so what you need to do is try to rotate this and select this one because this is the phase selection so select this phase apply now the value value is thousand so i just put thousand here so i have applied a heat flux of thousand watt per meter square that's my heat flux so once you are done next go for again steady state thermal insert and go for convection now the convection you can see the two values here one is a, a film coefficient the other one is a maybe ambient temperature so in our problem they have given the film coefficient value is 30 next the ambient temperature is 28 degrees now the next thing you need to select the geometry now to select this geometry you must understand apart from the bottom of the base i need to select the remaining all the surfaces okay so the geometry selection so click on the face here and press the control while selecting and select all the faces except the bottom face so now i'm doing that verify control so select the surfaces now again to rotate maybe you need to once leave the control again press the control select this face this face this top now we are left with these faces now this side so i hope we have selected we selected all the faces except the bottom so if you satisfy if you are okay then click on apply so we applied the convection next you need to go for solution so we applied the heat flux we have given the convection also next go for solution right click insert the thermal and temperature again solution insert thermal go for total heat flux 
again solution insert thermal directional heat flux so once you are going for the directional heat flux what you need to understand is in our diagram maybe at the bottom we have given that q value so obviously the heat convection will be something like this so whatever the in your diagram wherever the you can see that orientation so according to this diagram this is a z direction so similarly you need to see that orientation for your diagram based upon that you need to change it to x y z so once you are done next thing the last one click on the solution and click on solve so we applied the boundary conditions and we also asked for the temperature total heat flux and directional heat flux so the first one let me see the first one the temperature so this is the temperature i got and if you observe this scale so as i said this is the steady state thermal so steady state there will be a minute change of temperature that you can observe here so the temperature change is 33.2272 to 33.331 so it's in a decimal change so if you observe so this is this is how the temperature is changing okay so this is a my steady state thermal temperature now let me get to the second one that is my total heat flux the total heat flux so if i try to play the animation now this is how you can see the the heat flux which is transferring through my fin so it's also values ranges from the minimum value is 102 and the maximum value is 2691 you can see if you want to see the units these are my units here the last one is total directional heat flux so to what is the total directional heat flux as the name indicate directional so to observe this beside the home there is a result so in that result tab click on iso lines now you can see this is how your directional heat flux is actually so this is how you need to perform your steady state thermal analysis we have seen the temperature total heat flux and the directional heat flux so direction in the sense how your maybe heat is traveling in which direction so as if you remember we have selected that jet direction right so so that's it thank you